Oh, my goodness. That was just... Let's try that again. <clears throat> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody doing today? Oh, thank you. Come on. You just had a wellness day, right? So... As always, you know, again, uh, one thing before we even jump into uh, our, our slides. Uh, so you may have saw it on Piazza, so I'm just going to go ahead. It's that time. Uh, ah, the time where I don't have to do anything. You have to do it all at this time. I get to sit back, relax, and bring a book. Uh, so the midterm will be next week. Uh, you know, all of the lecture will... Monday, we will review. Review for midterm. So Monday, we will review. But in case you are feeling like you want to prepare, right? That's always kind of a good thing. Uh, so there is a study guide available to you already. Uh, the key will unlock on Tuesday of next week. So right before your midterm uh, at 6 p.m. That way, you know, that you can... Review your work. Um, that's how that's kind of uh, aligned. But the idea, again, we will review on Monday. But this is essentially a, a copy of how the exam's going to look. You know, there may be like one or two extra questions on there to keep you on your toes about what will be and what will not be on the exam. But yeah, it's going to look exactly like this. There's going to be a full, you know, this is instructions uh, of what you need and what to expect. Uh, and it's going to, yeah, you know, what's a cooking agent? Build the peas for a cooking agent. What if I wanted to do a dog walking agent, a little robot that's walking my dog for me, right? How would I, you know, what would be the piece of that? So some other little bits, uh, uninformed searching, you know, hey, use breath first search. Oh, use iterative deepening search, right? So again, you, you, the things that you we have covered in this class so far. Here's a star. Uh, oh, simulated annealing, genetic algorithms, ant colony optimization. We will talk about Minimax today. Uh, but this is, you know, again, all I'm going to do when it comes time to, you know, build the exam and whatnot and what you are going to do is you're going to see the exact same thing. Numbers are different, right? I showed you my builders, right? I showed you my builders. My job's done. I already automated the exam building process, right? So I'll, you know exactly what will be on there. And again, we will review as well. So the way I kind of present this is, uh, again, the key will be available next Tuesday so you can review if you are feeling super froggy and you want to knock out uh, the study guide sometime this week or before Tuesday and you'd like for me to review it and tell you whether or not you're doing good or bad, let me know, right? You know, you have to send me a completed version, though, right? So, uh, yeah, that's all there available to you. You're welcome to uh, use it as necessary, and we'll, we'll get to that next time. Questions? Yes? When, when does the, the answers for the study guide open? Uh, the answers will be available on the 24th. So the 24th, that's not a calendar. Why did you get rid of the calendar windows? Uh, that's Tuesday. Tuesday at 6 p.m. Yes. Well, I clearly have a box that we need to address. And that's where we will address. So this is, again, just like we were just talking about, right? We are at the final lecture uh, before we sort of wrap up the classical, traditional AI section where we're, again, just doing a lot of searching and traversal. Uh, and specifically, though, you can see, you know, there's that nice, interesting word. And again, this is almost giving you a good idea of what to expect, but this idea of an adversary now when we're doing our search. No longer is it you just, hey, you know, here's a dot on the screen, figure out the pathway to the dot. What if, as you're doing that, 
you have an adversary, someone who is attempting to make sure that you cannot get the dot, you cannot reach your goal condition, and in fact, is attempting to do the opposite, prevent you from getting to that goal condition. And so that's where we start to introduce some kind of, I've talked about this a few times, but it's something that we have to keep on bringing up. Sometimes a goal condition doesn't exist, right? There's just, I was just a part of a, a thing, a little symposium today. Uh, you know, we're trying to talk to industry partners about, you know, AI and what to prepare students for with AI. And one of the things that we were talking about in that whole session was like, yeah, sometimes there's just not a solution, right? And what do you do? Like, what do you do in those problem-solving situations? And, you know, that, that kind of presents us with this idea that sometimes we focus more on a strategy, right? This idea, I don't have goal conditions, but I have a process. I have a Again, what we call a policy that I'm going to follow in hopes that that leads me to some amorphous goal condition. And so that same kind of idea can come into play. If, again, we're thinking about this from having an adversary, right? Adversary is just the big fancy $5 word for opponent. Okay, well, you know, since someone was talking about Boulder's Gate and killing children uh, earlier uh, before class. Terrible, terrible, right? Think about that if you were to try and automate that game, right? It's, a, it's you know, modeled after D&D, &D and it has a very set number of video game spells or items, uh, and you're fighting someone, right? You are controlling your character, but AI, the game, is controlling the opponent. Well, what if you built, you know, I, I think... They just released modding. So there's, there you go, fun project for someone uh, to do. I'll be your advisor for it. Uh, mod Baldur's Gate so that you have automatic battling. You know, do it. Have fun, right? No, that's, hey, you know, I should be able to model those types of things. If my opponent does a certain action, what do I do in response to those actions? And so, again, how we can kind of look at that is, that's still a search problem, right? If you do something, I do something. If you do something, I do something. Those are actions. That's just the same structure that we've seen so far. The only difference is, right, if I'm drawing out this structure, right, I do something. They do something. Maybe in, I'm just picking like two moves, but you know, rock, paper, scissors or something like that, right? Uh, or something that's a little bit more sequential uh, back and forth, like chess or, I don't know why, I just gave my connect four. In fact, I brought it for a reason. It's prop, right? Hi, what's your name? Where are you from? Nice, right? All right. Well, have you ever played Connect Four? No. Good. I swear I know how to hook. There, there. I am an adult. I know how to play. So we're going to play a nice little game of Connect Four. Would you like to be red or yellow? Uh, red. All right. Joke's on you. Yellow goes first in this game. So what happens? <laughs> all right. Well, I get to decide. And you've all, if you've played Connect Four, you know we go in the middle. Now, you're looking at this and you're starting to evaluate what to do. And what was it again? Oh, Vajim. Vajim? Yeah. So Vajim is, uh, say it better. I'm, I'm, Vajim. Va you, you said it right. Vajim. Yeah. Vajim. So Vajim placed it at the top. And now I have to make this evaluation because, right, do I go to the right or do I go to the left? One of those is going to change the entire structure. And so I'm arbitrarily, because, you know, it doesn't really matter, I'm going to put it in on top. Why? Because I know! Go ahead. Fight me. And then I get you right here. Yeah, and we're going to speed this up a little bit because I only get 75 minutes and you didn't pay 
NC State to watch me play a game of Connect Four with a student. Uh-oh, 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 here you go. <laughs> Speed chest, we gotta keep going. No pressure, no pressure. Don't you dare! <laughs> Give me those. You think you're a tough guy, huh? Moving on. <laughs> so, no, so when we look at this, we are presenting this in sort of a game-like structure, right? Uh, and when we kind of present that, it's think about different types of games. Yes, I'm doing you know, traditional uh, children's games, but think about that from just you as a programmer's perspective. You could model that, right? You could build those things out because they have very simple rules. They're not Baldur's Gate with eight billion items and moves. Right? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven columns. Pick one of the columns to work off of. That's a lot easier to build off of. And in fact, that's where, once again, if we think about what we were talking about at the beginning of the semester, right, we have this ability to have deterministic moves. You can't change the environment after you make an action, right? I can't undo the jeans there, right? I can't do that. And then magically, see, now I won, <laughs> right? I can't do that. I, I'm not able to do that type of stuff, right? So again, that's deterministic. And sometimes we don't have all the information, right? This is a perfect, completely observed environment. You know every possible move and can model it. But what about something like Battleship, right? Suddenly, oh, I got to guess moves, but I don't know where you would put a particular ship, and that changes from game to game. Those are still modeling. I can still determine what would happen. Uh, and then we get into the game of chance. We'll talk about those a little later in the semester, but specifically the part I want to get at is this new term that we've added in, right? Everything else, deterministic, fully observable, Zero-sum game. And the entire idea to a zero-sum game is that if I'm working you know, towards a particular goal, and I'm thinking about this from an agent's perspective that is evaluating, I'm going to have a quantifiable measure to that goal. How I want to model my opponent, because again, I'm trying to think about what my opponent could potentially be doing. How I model that is I think okay, they're going to want to do the exact opposite. They would want the exact opposite of a good move from my perspective, right? Again, what I consider a good move, they want completely opposite, the inverse of that. Um, you know, as we look at this, this is where suddenly, right, we can evaluate each state. It's, I know I'm not going to erase it, but I don't remember which, there we are, right? So I think I went ahead, I placed it here. I, I set my motion on this very far right column because that was what I chose. Now, when Vajim is setting up his decision-making, right, what's happening? Well, he's looking at the state of the environment and producing a, 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 an evaluation, Right, an f of x or an f of n, and when I'm modeling that, or when we're modeling each other, right, we look at it and say the only difference is that he's going to negate whatever I do, and vice versa. I'm only going to I'm going to negate uh, the same kind of approach. I'm, I'm, you know, whatever score we assign this to, like a value, you know. There's a one and then there's a negative one or, you know, win and whatever the negation of win is, lose. Uh, so 
how we start to kind of translate this structure. You can see it's already forming into the graph, but we're still in physical land, right? So how we start to look at this is that same kind of concept, mm-hmm. right? We start with that S not, or, you know, again, that's the initial state. That's what you've seen, you know, with your agents in problem sets one and two starting in the top left, right? Oh, that's just the state of the world at the very beginning. But now we start to look at that and say, okay, whose turn is it at this state, right? When we began, just because I don't want to look at my failures anymore, right? When we begin at state zero, Whose turn is it? And if you were paying attention, what color starts first? Oh, look at that. You were paying, right? Oh, well, that, uh, look at that. I, I, I know suddenly right, I'm able to use this function where I look at my particular state and I can determine whose turn it is right now. And that same kind of concept goes on. Well, what happens if instead of me looking at it from whose turn is it, what if I'm looking at what are my options, right? What are my options or actions that can happen at these particular moments or, in our case, columns? You saw this. This is no different than, you know, problem set two. Your agent had a set of actions. Move up, move down, move up, move down, move left, move right, right? That same kind of concept going on here. And now I'm going to just play a very, very boring game for a second. So yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, red, right? Just down the middle. Okay, well, this is state, you know, state zero, one, two, three. So state seven has come into play. I've just continued playing down the middle. State seven, what are my available options, right? And if I were to just map these out of like columns, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, right? C1, C2, C3, C5, right? Because that middle one is no longer an action. I don't have a, the ability to go down that column. C6, C7. And then finally, we get sort of the, the mix between the two of them. Hey, what is, the pro, what is the product if I do a particular action at a particular state? Right? If I wanted to know, hey, what is the result of, where's my, da, 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 da. from here, if I went to C1, that's going to produce some new state. And this is where, you know, I, you can see it's not like it's a sequential thing, because if I did place that at C1, right, I don't have to put it here to be C, you know, for this to be state 9. Right? It could be here, it could be here, right? All that, that's just me, you know, showing some sort of transition model between the fact that I'm looking at what happens next. That's the important part here. It's not just me planning out my moves, but it's thinking about what happens at each one of those moves. What happens to the environment at each one of those moves or actions? And the reason why is because, again, eventually we'll hit, let me just, there we are. Eventually, we will hit a terminal node, right? Think about this again. This is a search, and one of the things that I'm going to result in is goal conditions or situations where I don't need to move any further. The game is over, right? 
connect four. I don't need to connect every, I don't need to fill in every uh, uh, one of the, the columns. The, the game is over, right? You know, four uh, sequential colors have been, are touching. Uh, but we also have, you know, false, right? What if the, come here, is the game over? No, that's the right way. No, right? That, the game has, is, has just started, essentially. That's where, hey, it would be returning a false. Game's still on. We're not at a terminal state. But then we also have that idea of that utility. This is where I know, you know, I've only just released problem set three to you, but I'll go ahead and give you a severe warning about what problem set four might be looking like. Right? You might want to evaluate, hey, given a state of the board, whose turn is it? How did they look at the board? Right? I know winning moves for me, but my opponent doesn't see them as a winning move. They, my opponent sees them as a losing move. Again, it's opposite. Now, this is where you can see we can have different types of values for here. Right? We could have the win be a positive one. Does it have to be a positive one? Hopefully my face is telling the answer already. Thank you, thank you, right? No, right? it's a program. Make it 10, make it a billion. You control the code, right? We do one because again, it's a positive number. We, and it's the positive scalar. When we're at a loss, it's a negative scale. When it's at a draw, right, if you've, Without playing that game again, if I were to shrink this down into a much smaller game, Najim, where would you like to go first? In the middle, of course you would. Get all of them, you know. I'm going to put it here. That way we can make it a draw. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you put it there, you would have won, right? You put it in the middle. That was the worst part. No, so the big thing there is what's the evaluation of this board? I, I did this on purpose, so you know, I didn't want to lose again. Uh, right? What's the evaluation? Well, this is a draw. I know technically, yes, you know, the state's terminal, but what's the utility of this? Well, it's not necessarily a loss, but it's not a win either. So maybe I evaluate some moves where game's over. This is not a good terminal state because I'm not losing, but I'm not winning. Mm -hmm. So again, this is where what we want to present is this idea of the adver adversarial search. OK, I've given you enough context. And I've played a game. I've played another game. I'm, what, 0, 1, and 1 right now. You know, that, that last one is through cheating, but uh, it's okay, right? right? But, okay, so how we translate the adversarial search is now into something known as the mini-max search. So we're going to think about, instead of it being Dr. G and Vajim, it's Max and Min. Those are the agents that we're working off of. Specifically, we're going to think about our agent as max. Min is always the opponent, right? So, okay, we're playing this game of tic-tac-toe. When we think about it, well, what's all of the possible moves that max can be working off of, right? Max is capable of working off of, you know, all the different moves in the tic-tac-toe board. There's nine potential moves that max can be working off of. But specifically, as we go through this search, Whose turn is it now? I heard something. The O, so if, if the competition is now against two people, one or two agents, two players, one is named Max, Max always goes first, 
min is the other player. After that first move, whose turn is it? Min, right? So Max is making their initial move. Mm -hmm, yes, you know, Max is going to attempt to maximize their chance of getting a, or maximize their utility rather than chance uh, of winning, right? But it's Min's turn, right? Now, after we move through this whole thing and we, it's now the opponent's turn, the same thing's going on here. Now, Max is going, hey, you know, oh, what would Min do? Well, again, Max is evaluating all the possible moves that Min has available. And this is now eight moves because right, one of those, in our case, just vanished. And this goes back and forth because now that Min picks a move, right, again, thinking about this from the search tree's perspective, now that Min picked a move, right, now it's Max's turn all over again. And so we continue going through this entire process mm -hmm, until we get to that terminal node. And I know we haven't, you know, we're not seeing that terminal node quite yet, but specifically when I look at the environment or the node in my search tree, is this a good node or a bad node, right? Well, if I keep on mapping it out, we can start to evaluate it. Well, if I don't have an answer, right, when it's here, I might not have an answer. You know, what do I do? How do I evaluate this? Yes, that's part of the fun, right? But when we're dealing with a, a very clear lose, draw, or win, in these situations, things are a little different. Things are a little, you know, they work slightly different. So in this situation, right, this is a terminal state. It has a very clear utility, negative one. When max is or in a draw, again, like we saw, very clear utility, zero. Very clear utility, positive one, when max is winning. So I've shown this off. I've kind of started to evaluate it. But what we call this is the mini max search. So what is the mini max search? It is depth first search. Ah, there you go, ta-da, right? So why do we call it a different thing? Well, again, it's because we have different opponents. We have this idea that, hey, when I get to a leaf node, a terminal state, the game is over, if we're thinking about it from Connect4 land, right? When the game is over, we have a utility score for the final part of the game. Well, what happens, right? If I let Bajim or Min, you know, to keep it in the, uh, uh, the Minimax way, if I let Min do that move or get to here, right, that evaluates into... I'll just do it negative one because I've lost. Then what happens? Well, that needs to go up. That needs to get just like problem set two. After you found your path, what was the next step? You got to find your way back, right? You got to find your way back to your starting. I found a potential terminal state. I found an ending. Let me evaluate that ending. Oh, it's a bad ending. Let me tell, you know, myself. So we keep on moving up. So as you're doing this depth first search, whenever you run into your dead end, right, when you start backtracking, you're bringing that value with you, that utility of that dead end back with you. So how does this start to pan out, right? Okay, now we're starting to flesh this into code. It's no longer just values and connect four and tic-tac-toe. So the way you can start to think about it is, well, I start to evaluate the state, the environment. Hey, am I at a terminal node? Yes or no, true or false, right? If terminal state, well, if it is, hey, what's the value? Well, the value is going to be equal to the utility at that particular state. 
But what if it's not? Else, else if. Well, if it's a max node, aka my turn, right, my agent's turn, then out of all my possible children, I want to pick the one that gave me back the high. Remember, it's I'm looking at all my children. I do a depth first search. They brought back the numbers. Which one was the best number, right? I want to find the highest. But I also have to map out all of my opponent's moves as well. I have to start going, hey, you know, what happens when it's Vajim's, Vajim, 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 Vajim's turn? Then I have to think, okay, right, I need to also map out all of his moves or all of my opponent's moves because, again, right, I need to think about all, you know, all the possible actions they may take that may result in me not winning. So same kind of concepts going on. It's still depth first search. It's still the same search tree. But I'm going to make the assumption that men, my opponent, will always pick the smallest number. Now you can see why we have positives and negatives. But we can flesh this out further, right? That was still just like hand wavy pseudocode. So what if I translate that? Again, hey, let me look at all my actions. And let me do a little bit of recursion. You notice right there? It's like I'm in the minimax, but here's the minimax again going on there. By the way, if you're shaky on your recursion, there is no non-recursion version of the minimax algorithm. I know I kind of gave you some other ways. To, no, you got to do minimax. You got to do a recursive style. But look at that. Hey, let me do the minimax. What's the result of a state with a given action? And whose turn is it? Well, if it was Max's turn, now it's Min's turn. So I'm alternating whose turn it is. I'm flipping each time. When it's Min's turn, the same thing's going on, but then it turns into Max's turn. And notice, this is inside of a big, massive function. Min. Min for min. Max for max. Because what do I do? I'm doing a comparison of this to what I already know. Notice, it's in a for loop. Go down one possible pathway, give me back the best answer. Now go down the other pathway, give me back the best. Now give me, go down, give me the best answer, right? So I'm constantly doing this to get that brute force best possible answer. So when we kind of present this, again, that's me saying the same thing. There's men's doing the same thing. <sighs> the part you cared about, the part you wanted, the part, again, as I dangle the carrot in front of you that you will very soon want, the pseudocode, right? As you can start to see, it starts to get a little bit more complicated. It's... it's a recursive minimax function, but I also have helper functions along the way. I've got a max val function. I've got a min val function for a given state. Well, if the state is terminal, just return it, right? I'm at the end. Just tell me what the value of it was. Else, else. Notice I'm starting off. You've done this. This is, what is it? This is, 116, largest number in an array territory, right? You've seen this before. Uh, why yellow, right? Start at the lowest possible number. Pop quiz for you thinking about it in Java land. How do you get the lowest possible integer? Integer dot min value. This is going to be important. You should probably remember this one. I believe that's how it is. Because again, you got to remember negative infinity, that's not possible on the computer. 
what is possible with an integer, right? Oh, that's negative 2 billion something. What? Either way, that's my starting point. Why? Because the next little part here is that max and min. Where are you? I'm going to pick it better there. That, there's that max and min score that we were just talking about. And we do it again as we go through it. We're traversing every one of those actions as we find a better pathway than negative infinity, right? Oh, we found something that's one? Great. That's better than negative infinity. It automatically becomes my action that I'm going to do. If I can find something better than one, right, that's what the max is for. Min's doing the same thing. The only difference in min's territory is it starts with positive infinity. Now, using the context clues, how do I get the biggest integer? Oh, my goodness. It's great when a plan comes together. All right. Oh, look at that. Ta-da. Right? So you can map these things out quite nicely. And if you notice, right, between these two helper functions, what's occurring? I'm calling the other one. Right? That's where these jump. Yes, it's a lot of arrows and a lot of highlighting. Min value calls max value. <laughs> max value calls min value. And it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until I'm at a terminal state. So I'm doing the entire mapping until I get there. Uh, and at the end of the day, again, this is why when I started this talk, I said we always start with max. Why? Say low. Yeah, but why? True. And who is Max? Well, don't now remove the idea of player from it. No. Remember, you know, what, what are we typically building in this class? Oh, I heard it, I heard it. Agents. An agent is making a decision, right? And so that agent is treating themselves like Max because they are trying to find the best possible outcome. So they're trying to maximize it. So in this situation, right, since I have to deal with an opponent, Right? Since my agent has to deal with something that is attempting to not let it succeed, that's where, again, it's chess. It's this idea of I have to think about what the opponent may potentially do the entire time. I have to maximize these worst-case scenarios where I imagine my opponent is always picking the best possible move at that given state. So how do I start to look at that? All right, so I start, again, with this idea of it's an exhaustive search. It's a depth-first search. That's not going to change quite yet. We'll get there, but not yet. So let's arbitrarily say I have a very simple game, right? That simple game, I only, every, there's only two moves each time, right? And at the end of those games... Right? You, get a, you get a score. You get a utility. I don't know. This is a, one of those things where uh, you know, two people are controlling a, a, a character in a game, and the options are you know, go through the left door, go through the right door. And every time you go through one of the doors, someone else gets to pick the next move. Okay, well, again, what's happening? Right? So in this situation... We want to think about the idea of, okay, I've traversed. So we start at that beginning node, depth, first, search, right? Depth, first, search. This is why only the bottoms are mapped out to start, because what happens at depth, first, search? I hit that, too. Is that a terminal state? 
yeah, there are no possible actions from here. So what's happening? Depth first search means go up. And what I said when I was dealing with that terminal value, again, think about what I'm saying, right, here. I'm propagating it up. Now, you do notice, hey, again, this is Max's turn. That would make this Min's turn. And that would make this Max's turn. Technically, you know, as we go down, our code is still saying, oh, that's going to be Min's turn. But it's a terminal state, so it doesn't matter. Like, that was the last possible move. That's checkmate kind of thing. So that 2 comes up. Is 2 bigger than negative infinity? Right? So what happens? Oh, in theory, this node may be a 2. Right? This may be the action I take. But, again, we're starting to think about this from the mapping perspective. It's depth first search. So I hit a dead end. I backed up. Depth first search means I check my next possible route. Oh, nine. Nine is also a dead end, and nine propagates up. Now, seem like a smart bunch. Which one is bigger, two or nine? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's the career fair today, right? Yeah, I really need you all to say nine when I ask those kinds of questions. Our e-partners depend on it. Right? So what happens? Oh, I change. My, that, that's suddenly the better of the two moves. So if I were, again, think about this from that position of you, you, know, you acting like an agent. If I can get here, if I can get to this state, I know what I can get. But we have a problem. Am I going to be able to get to that state? Because the propagation keeps going upward, right? That propagation, I finished my depth first search. There are no more possible moves. So I brought that nine back. OK. All right. Now what? Well, Min looks at that. Min's current value is positive infinity. Nine is smaller than positive infinity. So, OK. Min's currently, you know, when I'm thinking about the moves, you know, would Min let me get here is what I'm trying to get at. Well, then we propagate that stuff down. We get down to here. This becomes a seven. This is Min, or sorry, Max's turn, right? So Max is thinking, okay, well, on this side, I can do a, a, a seven. Uh, propagates downward, brings that four back up. Four can't beat the possible seven action. So, you know, as I'm thinking about the moves, it's like, well, I'm going to pick the seven. Or my agent, you know, would pick the seven. So that seven gets brought up. And so, yes, even though nine is the better of the options, would min pick nine over seven? No. Min is trying to minimize And so even though I have a great potential move here, out of all of it, it's like one of the best, Min would never let me have it, right? Min would do this whole thing over and over again. And in fact, uh, just to keep on going, uh, here are some little details. One, these don't necessarily need to be the end, right? Because in certain games, how deep do you go? And what happens when you translate my fun little triangles into code. You know that, that, that wonderful thing? You probably, some of you may have visited it. It's called stackoverflow.com. Right? It's a beautiful site. No, you've never seen that. You've never been to that website at all. Right? I see, yeah, right? Stack Overflow. Think about what happens if this just keeps going, right? Think about all the possible moves. Here's a little hint. Java will crash if you try and do a depth first search all the way down. Right? So six by seven possible moves. What is this? 43? That breaks your Java, your JVM. 
Stack Overflow. So you have to think about, you know, maybe I evaluate things halfway through. And how do you do that? What kind of heuristic do you provide? Yes. Uh, either way, again, this is uh, some of the mapping already in place for you. You can see, you know, Max is picking the bigger of my two uh, values each time, but then min is also picking the, you know, smallest of those next, you know, possible actions until finally, you know, the last possible move, Max found, uh, hey, you know, I, between a seven and a five, seven was the better of the moves. And so out of all these possible things, here's the situation or the, the environment that would probably end up. Uh, mm -hmm. There's your, your path. Questions? Yes? OK, so you said it would crash if you try to you try to do it like from the beginning, I guess. So not from the beginning, from every possible option. Again, from a Java perspective, remember, think about just this is 43 layers of a stack in the, the JVM. It does not do that. Every time, or for every move, though, right? because that would also get very expensive. We'll talk about very expensive stuff in a second. Yeah. I mean, I guess the main question that I'm thinking of is like, how do you calculate utility against the things that this game keeps you playing? But yes. Like, plus one and it includes minus one. So then I guess do they just like add up every time you get closer to a win, you get an extra plus one? Like, how do you calculate utility? So the, the question is, how do you calculate out your utility? Uh, yes, it depends on the game, but that is actually something open. Uh, that is, I, I'm going to go ahead and, again, continue dangling the carrot. Like, when you get to problem set four, that is something that I am tasking you to, figure, to decide. Because it's the heuristic, right? I'm not at a goal. How do I evaluate if... This is a good board or not. And I, that is where I leave that up to you of like, we don't have an answer. Hit your head on the keyboard to figure out some answers. Yeah. So with that out of the way, uh, very quickly, because I know this does not take time, I'll give you uh, five minutes. So we'll come back at 3.53. Have at it. And we are back. Let me see how you did. Uh, very briefly, because uh, just seeing where we are on time. Mm -hmm. In class activity, I already had it up, but oh well. So if we're looking at this, yeah, you know, overall, you know, just be mindful here. You, you, you flipped it. So don't, remember, um, this is that point of like when we're dealing with our, our mini max searching, we always start with max. So always, always, it's never like a, but what if? It is always. So the mini max search always starts with max. Um, you know, I can see the, here this was, someone had maybe flipped it on accident or something. But uh, since I'm seeing vast majority here, uh, I'll just go ahead and keep on mapping it out. Here's how I'm going to make your recommendation of tackling. I'll say this again on Monday. But since you know, there's no intuitive thought to this beyond it being a breadth first search, just tackle it all you know, in unison, right? Oh, OK. Uh, then min's turn, so that's a 6, that's a 7. Uh, and then max's turn, that's a 7. That part's easy. I get that, all right? That, you know, that's why I have so many already uh, knocked out so quickly. But that's where the limitation comes into play, right? Because what happens if I do have that complex environment where I have many more moves, right? Connect 4 has 43 possible, you know, 
stages, if I get to a draw, and if I'm going to try and map out all 43 of those, especially programmatically, I may run into computationally impossible situations, right? Uh, or what if I'm dealing with uh, uh, games where I'm allowed to move backwards, right? Chess, can I move my rook back where it came from? Yeah, right? That's part of the game. So that becomes an infinite search or a very exhaustive search. Because, yeah, technically I can find the solution, right? Because I'm mapping out everything. It's a depth first search. But the problem is, you know, if it takes me 10 years to find the solution, nobody really cares, right? That's bad. That's, you know, heat death universe. So what are the situations? Well, you can, again, you'll need to do some evaluating of non-terminal nodes. You can also try some iterative deepening, right? Just keep on checking downward. But the one I want to kind of get at is this last one, pruning, specifically this idea of what we call alpha beta pruning. The full term, it becomes minimax with alpha beta pruning. But the idea is, I'm going to do a little bit of that depth first search, but I'm going to keep track of two additional values. It's no longer just pass the terminal value up. I'm going to keep track of two things. I'm going to keep track of what we call alpha, right? This is the largest possible value that max has currently seen. And then I'm going to keep track of beta. Beta is the smallest possible value that min has seen. Because remember, max wants the best possible situation. Min wants, in our case, the worst possible situation. So if I ever run into a situation right, where I've learned, yeah, max or min would never let me get down this way for whatever reason, well, stop searching it, right? Because I know that I'll never get there. It's, it's, you know, beyond possible. So how do we start? Well, very similar to that value, we're going to initialize both alpha and beta as infinities, but negative and positive. And we're going to keep on passing it down. Now, when we bring something up, only one of those values changes each time. It's not like both of them are changing at the same time. Alpha only changes when I'm at a max node. Beta only changes when I'm at a min node. And uh, again, since every node has both scores, if at any point in time alpha is bigger than beta, we'd never get here. Min would find something better to have selected, or better, or you know, worse for us to select. So again, how I'm going to just map this out, and I'll fiddle with my PDF so that you know, top corner is fixed. Uh, but either way, again, let's arbitrarily say again, uh, I've got a little search going on here. I have my potential values. These are the terminal states, and these are the utilities at those terminal states. OK, well, again, you notice I start with alpha and beta as negative and positive infinity. Well, as I start to traverse down, I send those values with me, right? Now it's beta or it's min's turn, and I ask that question, is alpha bigger than beta? Well, no, alpha is very much smaller than beta. So we keep passing it downward. I see a terminal state. So what do I do? I push it back up. And what happens? Well, since I'm at a min node, I ask a question. Is that three smaller than my beta? Yeah, because my beta was positive infinity, three is smaller than positive infinity. Now what? Well, again, I'm still working through the depth first search. So I've backtracked, I've gone back up to B, and I'm going to come back down to 9. I see it's a terminal node, so I go back up. Is 9 smaller than 3? No. So I ignore it. That continues happening. I did that on purpose. And so that three is what gets passed up. Now, in Max's world, again, we only change alpha. OK, well, in that situation, we see that, well, three is bigger than negative infinity, right? Three is bigger than negative infinity. So alpha has just changed. But notice, here's what's about to happen. You clearly see I've got like that third option or that middle option that I, I you know, is about to happen. I'm, gonna, I'm about to go here. So 
what is going to occur is I'm going to pass alpha and beta. What that node has as its alpha and beta, the three in positive infinity, that's what's about to get passed to here. Boop. Boop. It gets passed down. Now the same situation's going on, right? Again, I'm gonna, about to do depth first search on all of my things. But what, pray tell, may happen if this was a 2? Well, I'm going to pass that 2 upward. Is 2 smaller than positive infinity? Yeah. So that's going to become 2. But why we present this is, why would I ever pick this move? Like, think about that from Max's perspective. Why would I pick this move? Why would I go down this way? Because I know Min's going to pick a worse option for me. Right? It doesn't matter if this is a billion or a trillion, right, uh, from a utility score. Because Min's going to pick the smallest thing. And either those are bigger or smaller, smaller and worse, or they're better, and I'll never get them anyway because it's Min's turn. So, right? That's why we stop or we prune when alpha is bigger than beta. Doesn't matter what is over here. This is, will never get picked unless it's smaller than this, aka worse than my currently best known move going on here. So again, there's that too. There's a reason why I did that. It's, you know, because I knew what my slides were going to say. I pass that up and those get pruned. I don't care what they are. I don't care what the score is, right? I never evaluate them. Why? Because again, think about this from an efficiency standpoint. We're trying to avoid taking 10 years to cycle through things or to, you know, traverse these things. I'm doing this at this level, right? You know, at only two levels, right? I did a or Max does a move, Min does a move. I know it's a small, you know, that's on purpose. 300 rows down, right? Now it's a pain. Don't do 300 rows down either. That, your JVMs won't like that. Um, but again, I pass that up. Well, that 2, is that 2 smaller or bigger than 3? It's smaller, right? So alpha is not going to change. And then what happens? Well, you can see I've got another option down here. And so, once again... Alpha and beta are going to get passed through. And then what happens? Well, again, we're continuing on that depth for search. D or, you know, uh, alpha and beta are going to get handled as well. Let's arbitrarily put that as an 8. Right? Eight's smaller than, uh, 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 what's it called? Negative or positive infinity. So that becomes the new beta. Good. We ask a question. Is alpha bigger than beta? No. No, it is not. So we continue going through the search. Now, in this situation, again, we see, hey, we saw a 5. Well, in, since 5 is smaller than 8, that's going to become the new option that Min would be picking from this situation. If that was it, right, then, you know, that may be the better of the two, but, again, we have another option to kind of go through. Oh, I see that there's a two again. Well, what do I, you know. Technically, I could just go ahead and stop, right? I know that I don't have anything else going on here, but what if I did? What if there were more possible options? Well, again, beta is now smaller than alpha, so I would stop. I wouldn't, it doesn't matter how many possible actions are. I found one that is worse than what I currently know as my best case scenario, right? Worst case scenario, worst case scenario. Best possible situation that I could be working off. So that gets propped up, it's still a two, so, you know, in that situation, it doesn't get used, but let's arbitrarily, mm -hmm. let's say it was a one instead, right? Hey, that's a one. 
that passes up. Is that better? No. Right? It doesn't matter. It's worse than what I have as my best option. Questions? Yes. So my current, yeah, so again, if we're looking down, I went down this route, right? I saw the three, again, treat it like it's step first search. So I saw the three, the three is better than what I currently have, which was nothing. Uh, I go down, well, that nine is not as good because remember, we're min, we're trying to pick the smaller number. So nine's not, you know. Uh, so my opponent is not going to pick this move. It knows a better move for its turn. Three. Right. So. A is max again. Max chooses three over main. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as, as you're talking it through, just so everyone can talk it through in their heads. So that three is passed up. That node is now officially getting back the value and making the decision of negative infinity three, three, one. Next iteration of the loop of actions, right? I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just trying to, ah. Right? For each action, we just did one action. Now we're on the next action, the next possible route. Where's my traversal? There it is. So next action, alpha and beta are being passed. That was originally with that positive infinity. I continue down the traversal. I see that too. As I bring it back up, well, that's better than positive infinity. Two. And the entire time I'm doing this, right, as I do return statements, I'm evaluating is alpha better than beta or greater than beta? Because if it is, just stop. Just stop whatsoever, just return. So in this situation, just return. Don't even bother going down. You notice, like, I've been trying to do, yeah, don't even, don't, uh, no. And I don't even, I don't even consider them. I don't look at the number. I don't think about them. I don't even, you know, they don't exist in my world. I just go back up. And then I do that same process over and over again. And so this is how I can start to map out my potential moves. We don't really have enough time for this one. Um, so, <laughs> Where am I on time? I can do it. I can do it. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Ta -ta -ta.